I'm just going to go back to the first slide. Let's see. Someone messed with my slides. OK, so hi, everybody. I'm very happy to be here. Um, I've been reading Wired for quite a long time, so it's really nice to be actually come and speak for uh, other people like me. Um, I can't really go to the US, so I'm really happy that Wired is for once in Europe. So, yeah. I'm going to talk a little bit about my background and, and why I do what I do. And uh, first of all, I want to say that I started with computers as when I was nine years old. So I was quite young, and I'm 33 today. So it's, I've been in the business kind of uh, a really long time. And when I was starting out uh, with my first computer, the only way to use it was actually copying things from other people. So I started with copying games and software and, and everything I could get a hold of, because that was the only way to use the computers. And it was really interesting. And we never spoke about things like copyright or anything like that. We just copied. And it kind of created me as a person. So I see myself as both copying ideas of other people and learning from things. So copying is essentially what a human being is. So. Um, Becoming a bit older, and when copying was more common in, among everyone, I started seeing all of these ads from Hollywood especially about how copying was bad. And I felt really strange about that, because I, you know, I felt like a copy, so could I be bad? And especially one uh, advertisement was really, really annoying from two really rich people. So I made a copy of this film. I'm going to show it to you. Jackie and I are on a mission to stop piracy. If this were a movie, we'd get the other big guys ourselves. But this is the real world. We need your help. When you buy pirate the movie and music, you support criminals. Now these criminals are counterfeiting other things, like electronics and medicine. The action! Demand the real thing. Help us stop piracy. That's terminated. Yeah. Uh, it's actually a real film. It's not uh, made up, even though it looks like it. So uh, I was really upset about this, and so was a lot of other people in Scandinavia, especially. So uh, there was a, a lot of people that combined and, and founded a group called Piratbyrån. And Piratbyrån means the Bureau for Piracy. And it was started because there was an empty Piratbyrån. And uh, so we decided to take the name Piratbyrån and you know, remove their anti in front of it. So everyone thinks we're the original one, because they came after. Um, and the idea was to show people that copying is good, and we need to do it, and, and talk about things like file sharing. And even if you know, we should have copying, good or bad, doesn't really matter, we should talk about it. It was really important to us. We started a lot of projects. Uh, we went out on 1st of May and demonstrated in Sweden and said, you know, we need copying, we need file sharing, we need 100 megabit of internet. Otherwise, we don't have welfare. And today, everyone in Sweden can have 100 megabits, and we take all credit for it. <laughs> Another project which we started, which is probably why I'm here, is, is the Pirate Bay. And the Pirate Bay uh, is, as most of you probably know, uh, the biggest file sharing system in the world. It's probably 20 times more active than Napster ever was. It's much, much, much bigger. And the thing with Pirate Bay was that it started as a Scandinavian file sharing site. We wanted Swedish people particularly to be able to talk about uh, copying and, and tell people why it's good uh, and make it into something more every day. And, uh, I remember when we were really small, it was, the site was still in Swedish, but people started using it from all over the world. All of a sudden, we had 70% of content in Spanish. But there was one thing that was the most downloaded ever, and that was actually a Swedish language course, because people are that interested into, into file sharing. I'm going to brag a bit as well about Pirate Bay, just so you understand why I'm here, I think. So statistics that everyone loves is obvious. Um, Every second, there would be over 100,000 computers connecting to the Pirate Bay servers asking for other computers that have stuff. So no one downloads from the Pirate Bay. They download between each other. We just help them to download. And BitTorrent, which is the technology we use, is very big on the internet. It's, um, it's very huge. But Pirate Bay is definitely the hugest uh, place where you can find in, in, uh, any content from BitTorrent. So over 60% of the content. And BitTorrent is over 80% of the internet. So it means the Pirate Bay is about half of the internet traffic. So when you see a fiber cable, half of that would probably be some sort of content that people are downloading from, from Pirate Bay or using Pirate Bay. And we never spent a lot of time on Pirate Bay doing work. We've done a lot of legal work, which took a lot of time. But really spending a lot, uh, time on technology was never big. Pirate Bay has never, never really been a good technology site. It's just been really huge because of other things. That we decided to stick up for the idea that people should be able to have unlimited file sharing capabilities, and we should not censor things. 
Um, some of the things that we became famous for is not only having a big site, but there was a reason for us being really big. And it is that when you start getting attention from these big companies about, you know, we're not going to censor anything, uh, they send you something called cease and desist letters. And they're really funny. So we started getting them from particularly American companies that uh, sent us letters saying, you know, you're breaking the DMCA law, which is illegal in Chicago, Illinois, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so you have to take down this and this torrent file. You can't let people download this and this. And we sent them pictures of polar bears saying, hey, we don't live in Illinois. We live in Sweden. We have polar bears eating us. That's a problem. Corporate is not. And <laughs> these lawyers were not really understanding if we were kidding or not. Uh, and they just didn't reply to that. So they said, OK, we're not going to touch this. Uh, and we didn't even just send it back to them. We actually published all of the letters that we got. So every single cease and desist letter that we got, we replied to and put it up uh, on our legal page on, on, on Pirate Bay. Um, we've had a lot of fun with these, of course. Uh, a lot of these legal letters are actually used in a lot of universities all over the world as something which is uh, to read up a bit uh, uh, more about as a tactic for uh, working against lawsuits, I think, or for lawsuits, I don't know. This is my favorite one. This is a cease and desist letter from a German company called Linotype. They own fonts. Particularly, they own Helvetica, which is one of the most used fonts in the world. It's so big that it even has its own documentary. Uh, and they sent a contract that we had to sign. They wanted us to pay 25,000 euros and blah, blah, blah. So, of course, we had to do something funny with this. So, we reversed the whole letter and said that they have to pay us and they have to stop sending us letters and, and stuff like that. And just to annoy them, we sent every, using every font that they complain about. <laughs> And the problem with this is that they didn't reply to this, because I would love to see a reply to this that would be as clever. We started getting a lot of attention, obviously, and, and the site was growing, and everyone else closed down because of legal pressure. So there was a big site like Supernova, which was the biggest file sharing site before us. They closed down. There was a 19-year-old guy running it, and he got his first cease and desist and decided that, you know, I don't want the police at my place. I'm going to shut down. The thing is that all of these sites are probably legal. But there was no legal uh, test at all with this. We decided we're going to stick around and see what happens. Um, and it, all of this was becoming a, a big discussion, file sharing. Is that good or bad? And what should we do about it? Uh, and people got sued all over the world. So there was this case in Denmark where um, a Danish ISP, the internet provider, actually got sued for allowing people to, to buy music too cheaply. So people in Denmark could go to a Russian site and buy music very, very cheap and pay Russian prices, which is you know, an effect of globalism and globalization. And the ISP was, was sued, saying that if you actually allow people to download, you will have a copy of this file in your cables, and you will break copyright. So you as an ISP are liable for the things in your cables, which is totally stupid. But the thing is that uh, the record companies won this thing all the way to the Danish Supreme Court. So all Danish sites, uh, all Danish ISPs have to, to censor the internet from, being, from allowing people to buy too cheap music, which is really crazy. One of these ISPs started doing the same in Sweden, saying we're going to show that we're on the record uh, label side and we're on the artist side. So they started censoring uh, Swedish users as well, saying that uh, you know, this is good for the internet, this is good for artists, so you're not going to be able to buy too cheap music, which is kind of crazy. So we became aware of our position when we started censoring or blocking this ISP from accessing the Pirate Bay. We just put up a big logo saying, your ISP sucks. You can't really have them. Here's a contract violation that they've done. You can um, revoke your access with them and just get a new supplier. You, you know, all the instructions was there. A phone number you could call and cancel your subscription. And they lost 40% of the customers in two days. The CEO called me up after two days and asked if we could make a deal saying that he would never censor Pirate Bay. And I said, you can go to hell because we're not about that. We want to talk about something else. We need internet freedom. We need some sort of freedom of, of, of speech and freedom of information flow. Uh, and he had to quit five days later, so I'm happy about that. <laughs> we did a lot of stupid, stupid stuff. Uh, we've been exhibiting ourselves as art at big art finals all over the world, at Manifesta, which is one of the biggest ones. We bought a, a bus and drove it from Stockholm to northern Italy uh, just to show off how fun this is, and kind of making us into something which no one understands what we were doing. So we're artists, we're hackers, we're uh, everything we want to be. And that's probably why we got sued so many times. We tried buying Sealand, which probably you UK people know about, a small island outside of uh, Leeds, I think, 
uh, which is its own country. We uh, were probably the first one to ever crowdfund, so we raised $20,000 to buy it. It was a bit of a joke. Uh, we were drinking beers and said this would be fun because it's for sale. Uh, and two days afterwards, the Prince of Sealand was talking with Larry King and the head of Warner Brothers uh, on Larry King's show about what will happen when we buy the country and remove all sort of uh, copyright law. Kind of crazy. Another thing that happened is, uh, of course, the Pirate Party. It was not started by us, but a lot of people were interested in, in what we were doing, so they founded a party in Sweden. Uh, and none from the Pirate Bay has ever actually voted for the Pirate Party, which is kind of interesting, because we all believe that we should focus more than just one thing. So the Pirate Party is all about freedom of, of uh, sharing. They want to make copyrights something, you know, they want it to go away or uh, reorganize how copyright works. Um, but they were really successful. In the Berlin election, they got 9% of the votes. So they are essentially a huge portion of the Berlin election. Um, and in Sweden, we had the European Union election, and 7.2%, I think, voted for the Pirate Party. So we now have two people in Parliament for the European Union that are actually pirates, which is kind of cool. So we got a lot of attention, um, and people wanted to shut us down. And first of all, they need to know who we are. So they sent private investigators after us. And just a tip, if you're interested in using private investigators, it's kind of stupid to send private investigators after people doing things online, uh, especially geeks. So one of our team members, uh, they were following him for six weeks, and they saw him once leaving the office. <laughs> kind of stupid. Uh, we also had a big raid, which was when we got the most attention ever. So a uh, good tip is also, if you have a, someone you don't like and you want to sue them, you shouldn't really do it in a way that they can get more attention for it. PirateBay was among the 3,000 biggest websites in the world. Uh, and then the police came, and actually the, the head of police at that time, also employed by Warner Brothers, who were the ones suing us, um, came and took all our machines. And a couple of days later, there was a big demonstration outside of Sweden where it became very clear what this was all about. This banner, I, I suggest, I think that most of you don't speak, speak Swedish, uh, it says, give us back the server or we're going to take your fax machine. <laughs> so it's very obvious. This is more about more than just uh, that people want something for free. It's about people wanting to change things. and It's about generational things. We got invited all over the world to speak about this. Uh, I don't have a lot of time today, but I could go on about funny things we've done. This is one of my favorite moments. I can't even get into the Swedish government to talk to the Minister of Justice Department and all of that. Uh, but when I went to Brazil, I met President Lula, who came up to me and gave me a big hug and said, Peter, we don't have an extradition treaty with, with Sweden. You can always come to Brazil. <laughs> and that's the president of one of the larger countries in the world. So, it's a bit of a difference with how we look at things. Uh, but I'm going to talk a little bit about why this has happened. Um, so I'm going to take the music industry as one thing, one example. So if you go back like 100 years, or maybe 200 years, the only way for musicians to make money was actually by going out to the streets and playing at different venues. And, and they were really happy about that. And then the, the record came, and people were upset in the music industry. They said, this is not good for us, because if we have the record, people will record the music, and we will never make money from playing again. So they tried banning this. But the record companies were really happy, because all of a sudden, there was this new business, and they understood they could make money from it. So after a couple of years of fighting, uh, you know, people started realizing that records was good for both record companies and the artists, because more people listen to music, they spend more time on music, and they spend more money on music. So it was a great success for everyone involved. Then came radio. And the record companies and the artists were really upset. They said that with the radio, no one will buy our records anymore because they will just listen to radio for free uh, and it will be really bad for us. So they, uh, the record companies actually told all the artists that we have to ban this. And for maybe five years, there was big discussions about the legality of radio. And uh, in the end, it turned out that radio was the best thing that ever happened to the music industry because people listened to radio, went out and bought the records, and people were more famous and they played at more gigs because people could listen to the music. So great success again. Then came a new invention. Uh, all of a sudden, you could record your music on a cassette. And the record companies and the artists, again, started complaining about this will end the radio. And radio is really successful for us. So we will not be able to sell records or make people listen to radio. They will just record it. And they tried fighting it again, and again, and again, and again. Uh, and 
it turned out that this was really good for the, the artists and the record companies because people bought even more music and spent more money on this. So you see a trend here, I think. Then came the CD, and unfortunately, Sweden was really uh, good at producing crap music. Um, sorry for that. I'm not Swedish, but I can't complain about it. Um, and the thing that happened with uh, the CD was that all of the music became digital. Uh, and they didn't really understand that from the record companies because they were behind this, pushing this new technology because they wanted to be able to control the way we were doing things. They wanted to be able to control the music because you couldn't really copy a CD in, in the beginning. You had to uh, buy the CD. There was no CD burners or recorders like that. Then came intelligent people and uh, made the internet everyday life. And with the internet, with the decentralization of the internet that no one controls one single point, or, or like the central point of it, um, you know, we had democratization. And with the digital music, all of a sudden you could send it peer to peer between people, and people wouldn't have to go directly to a record company and say, this is you know, uh, the price we're gonna have for it and all of that. They could just share this music. And this is where we are today, and people are obviously fighting this. Uh, and in the future, they're gonna fight other things as well. It's not just gonna be music. We're gonna have machines uh, as the wrap wrap and other 3D printers which will produce products. I have a friend who has one of these 3D printers and every time he uh, has a, no, something broken in his, ho in his house, he tries to actually print a new version of it. He actually printed a whole bumper for his Volvo 240. Um, probably more expensive right now than actually buying one, but it's a good example of what's gonna be pirated in the future. We're gonna have pirated jeans, we're gonna have pirated shoes, we're gonna do all of that pirated or buying them from, directly from um, the people creating the designs. And it's gonna revolutionize so much of how we think about the world and it's gonna affect what piracy stands for. And piracy is actually a word that someone else has given us who don't like to be controlled by big corporations. And usually when there's been discussions from the record companies about banning new things and all of that, they, they've been fighting directly against new technology. But now they've changed a bit. So Hollywood and the record companies are ganging up together with all of these other lobbyists and try to stop the internet as a whole. And they're doing this by uh, the ACTA agreement, which is supposed to uh, make people not buy pirated medicines and all of that. But of the ACTA agreement, there's three pages about uh, uh, medicines, but there's 20 pages about file sharing. And it's not a file sharing uh, thing at all, they say. We have IPRED, which allows uh, companies to control uh, and get information about who does uh, different things on the internet. They get more control in Sweden, for instance, than police have over what people do with the internet. And we have lots of th different things. And of course, we will have the same people that used to do uh, piracy and file sharing. They will also help with this new higher level type of, um, of fighting back, actually. So you have Anonymous and Wikileaks and all of these different uh, groups that are coming from the file sharing industry or file sharing movement trying to stop what is going on in the world, trying to stop corruption, trying to stop all of these new uh, lobbyist groups, because that's what's happening. Uh, it's just moving over to a new platform. And we don't have a lot of time, but I'm gonna end with some sort of picture to make you understand kind of what the problem is. Uh, it's when the lobbyists take a bit too much, uh, have too much pressure and, and, and so on people. It's, they take over, uh, politicians and makes them try to stop the internet because it's bad for democracy or whatever. But in the end, it, it's just bad when you have corrupt people that control stuff. So, thank you for that.